Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the weather warnings as we do have wind warnings and snow warnings in force and then we'll also have a look at the UK Met Office run looking at the five day precipitation as temperature as it's going to be very unsettled quite wild out there over the next couple of days uh, before the weekend uh, before the end of this coming week into the weekend we start to see things settle down a little bit but turn much colder especially in the evenings with hard overnight frost with really low temperatures temperatures for next week things may be starting to look like it might turn a bit milder and we'll have a look at the gfs and the ensembles at the end of the video have a look at that as well so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and uh, remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description so to start on the live radar you can see we do have a lot of precipitation around it's been a real wild day um now we've got the center of the low out just to the west of um, scotland and you can see all these showers spiraling around it and to the south of the low pressure system we do have some real heavy showers popping off you can see most of them are sort of moderate to heavy but you have seen some thundery showers break out now there was a line that moved through that's now well off into the north sea uh, out towards europe that did bring some sort of line convection but you can see even down across the south now we do have a few of these real heavy thundery showers these red colors indicating torrential rain um, and generally uh, the potential for lightning um, in these as well so we did say yesterday there was a risk of thunderstorms and we have seen that today with these uh, thundery uh, showers breaking out in the south they are quite isolated localized as well um, and you can see most of these showers are just generally darker green colors so heavy squally rain further northwards you can see more banding of these showers close to the center of the low and once again some real bright um, yellows and oranges and some darker reds as well in that indicating torrential rain and thundery potential as well and over the higher ground it's starting to turn back to snow as cold air is undercutting this low pressure system and as it does sink southwards and eastwards more of this cold air is dragging in that's the cold air that's going to be moving southwards over the coming days bringing all areas back into an arctic air mass with snow for some but more widely overnight frosts harsh overnight frosts but you can see a real wild day out there blustery wet westerly winds and typical sort of april shower regime with heavy thundery showers one minute uh, and nice sunshine the next minute it hasn't been too cold as well been pretty mild especially in the south with a milder upper air conditions but that will be being replaced over the coming days so you can see yeah it's been a real wild day out there and if you have survived out there without seeing any uh, heavy rain or very very strong winds then you've done very very uh, you've done very, done very very well today so if we do have a look at the warnings, we do have two yellow warnings in for force for wind. You see one from 8 p.m. at tonight until 5 a.m. tomorrow across parts of Northern Ireland. Winds will increase this evening across parts of Northern Ireland with gusts of 50 to 55 miles per hour, likely in places perhaps 60 miles per hour in a few exposed spots before easing beyond midnight. And you see again. Referring to the warning across North Wales, across North Wales and North West England, winds are expected to peak during the early hours when gusts will widely reach 50 to 60 miles per hour, possibly 70 miles per hour, close to some coasts. Very locally, uh, as you can see, there are localised yellow warnings coming in from the coastal areas, but still could be some severe impacts from it. Very likely lower end of the impact matrix. And then Thursday, we do have a yellow warning for snow from midnight, uh, or so midnight tomorrow until 9 a.m. Oh, midnight tonight, really, uh, until 9 a.m. Wintry conditions overnight and early Thursday may lead to some travel disruption in a few areas. You can see, uh, if we have further details, essentially one to four centimetres of snow above 300 metres and increasingly uh, temporary low level accumulation as well. Um, and there could be some ice as well. Uh, high likelihood at the lower end of the impact matrix with this. So snow potentially tomorrow. So if we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature. Now you can see these the heavy squally showers that move through today, turning wintry over Scotland. And it's going to continue through the evening, still banding, especially further northwards. For the south, it should slowly decrease a little bit before bands may perhaps start to move southwards, especially over the course of the uh, early hours of the morning. In the south, potentially a bit of a line convection there, right along the far south coast. It will be interesting to see how far inland that does come for heavier showers push southward for the early hours. Eventually, clearing through and just another showery regime tomorrow not quite as heavy and you can see it turning wintry in the north beyond that those northerly winds continue weather front in the south trying to bring some precipitation in may just clip the far south coast but mainly just bringing some cloud and we still continue to see some wintry showers along northern areas potentially maybe pushing southwards for a period of time through late friday early hours of saturday and we just stay really chilly through saturday 
Four weather fronts start to approach from the southwest. We do start to go into a warmer south to southwesterly wind, and that's something we need to keep an eye on next week. Depending on the exact cloud amounts, we could see high teens, maybe 20 degrees in this sort of air mass, but it's going to be unsettled generally. So very much will depend um, on uh, the exact cloud amounts. As you can see, this run is a bit cloudier. If we do just temporarily have a look at those wind gusts over the course of this evening, you can see those stronger winds coming in from this low pressure system, 60, 70 miles per hour in those localized spots, nowhere near as widespread heavy strong winds as we've seen with some, some of the name storms in the last few months, but still strong enough to warrant a yellow warning. If we do look at those max temperatures you can see today, not too cold, uh, but sort of 12, 14 degrees in the south, more towards high single digits in the north. But feeling chillier with that wind chill out there coming in from the west. Very strong um, with showers again, feeling pretty cold. Beyond that, through Thursday, you can start to see that cold edge sink, sinking southwards, and by Thursday afternoon, potentially 12, 13 degrees in the far south, more towards mid single digits to more towards freezing in the north. Through Thursday evening into early hours of Friday, widespread frost across the north in the south, holding just above freezing as that cold air hasn't fully gotten down yet. Friday, 10 to 12 degrees, but cold in a northerly breeze, much colder further northwards. That continues. Saturday, widespread overnight frost, and then Saturday afternoon, widely sort of 9 to 11 degrees, still feeling pretty cold out there, below average for the time of year. Early hours of Sunday, widespread frost once again, especially for central inland areas. And then through Sunday, mild air starts to push up from the far southwest, and it means by Monday morning, those widespread frosts are cut off. And again, if you have a look at those upper air temperatures right at the end of the run, you can see sort of 10 degrees at 850 HPA is getting pushed in. But you can see by the end uh, of this coming working week, you can see the minus sort of 5 to minus 8 line is pushing in. So yeah, real cold, potentially turning much milder, maybe 20 degrees milder come next Monday in terms of upper air temperatures. But towards the surface, all does depend on those cloud mounts, uh, and we'll have to keep an eye on that near the time. So we do, do now have a look at the GFS and the ensembles. Now you can see on the latest GFS, you can see there's a low pressure system developing, really unsettled. And then we're pulling in that real cold northerly flow. Again, have a look at that United Kingdom look. You can see real cold northerly flow. Look at those upper air temperatures. Chilly, cold, really quite cold upper air temperatures moving in. Minus five line getting through all areas. For uh, if we have a look at the upper air uh, pressure charts once again, you see start to see southerly wind starting to develop, and you see quite a warm southerly wind. Not massively mild, and also not massively warm, but much milder than recently, and could give high teens as a set. Beyond that, though, high pressure does build in with a bit of a milder upper air. But it starts to build towards Scandinavia and this blocking pattern continues and we start to go chilly. So any mild weather we potentially see sort of next week does look like it's going to be eradicated once again with colder conditions prevailing. You see a bitterly cold easterly wind at least for this time of year with quite a cold pool pulling in, minus five line. And then we start to go, looks like we're going to go back into another northerly flow. And if we just run that back briefly, have a look at those upper air temperatures for when that easterly wind comes in. You can see it's not brutally cold, but it is pretty chilly indeed coming in from the east, minus five line pushing in. Could be some wintry showers with that but more likely just frosts before that high pressure retrogresses out towards the Atlantic and we start to see a cold northerly wind. You can see the upper air temperatures are really nothing to shout about this time of year. Uh, sorry, not nothing to really shout about, but for this time of year, it is pretty cold indeed and most likely, again, get that minus five line through giving more widespread overnight frosts. And you can just see how unlucky we are in terms of seeing these really cold temperatures. You can see across many parts of Southern Europe, the Mediterranean, Eastern Europe, you see real warm 20 degree isotherm is starting to build whereas the uk getting plunged into the minus five so yeah looking pretty chilly indeed um, over the next couple of weeks even though it does look like we will see a bit of a temporary warmer spell potentially next week now if you look at the ensembles you can see that's not well supported in terms of a colder regime in the longer term definitely a lot of spread some staying really mild some going much colder the gfs operation run um or the 12 set run which we just looked at is on the colder end this is the six set run you can see our average at the moment dropping much colder down towards a good five degrees below average before lifting five degrees above average but then around sort of 12 13th of april we stay mild more trending towards average on some of the runs but you see there is such massive spread that it's very difficult to give any pinpoint on the upper air temperatures um, or even general pressure patterns it's changing very drastically it all depends on the blocking patterns because we've got a lot of blocking around and it's where it does sort of crop up Precipitation signal has decreased definitely today um, in, the, in the longer term, so perhaps more of a signal of high pressure within the ensembles today. If you do have a good two meter temperature briefly, you can see chilly over the next few days before. By next week, we could be seeing mid to high teens, maybe 20 degrees is possible in a few spots, but again, has to be one of those milder or warmer runs. 
Now, if we do finish up by having a look at the ECBA Efron, see how that does compare for upper air temperatures. You can see chilly over the next few days and rising well above average, a good 5, 6 degrees above average before trending more towards average. The ECMB Efron has a bit more of an idea up until the 14th of April, trending more to around average for actually, in the longer term, trending much more above average. So perhaps that GFS 12Z run is a bit of an anomalous run, but for the time being, it is looking pretty chilly indeed, even though longer term trends perhaps indicating maybe some warmer and drier weather, perhaps for the second half of April. But it is really one thing we need to keep an eye on. That GFS operation run could be onto something, bringing that high pressure a bit further north. It's bringing more of a northeasterly wind instead of a southerly or southwesterly wind. As I said in the videos recently, uh, I said quite a lot. This time of year, drastic changes or very oh, sorry, very small changes in pressure charts and, and sort of wind directions can make drastic changes to a surface. Northeasterly wind can be really cold, southeasterly wind can be balmy and hot. So it is very difficult, uh, and there can be a lot of up and downs within the ensemble members and uh, flipping between solutions. So I have to keep an eye on that over the next few days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and stay safe out there. Over the next few days, it is going to be cold, slick, and potentially icy for some.